ಎಂ ಶೈವಾಸಮುಪಾಸತೆ ಶಿವೈದಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೇದಿ ವೇದಾಂತಿನೋ ಬಹುದ್ಧ ಬುದ್ಧ ಇದಿ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಪಟವ ಕರ್ತೇದಿ ನಯ್ಯ ಐಗ ಅರ್ಹನ್ ನಿತ್ಯಥ ಜೈನ ಶಾಸನರತ ಕರ್ಮೇದಿ ಮೀಮಾಂಸಕ ಸೋಯಂವೋ ವಿದಧಾಂಚಿತ ಫಲಂ ತ್ರೈಲೋಕ್ಯನಾಥೋ ಹರಿ ಸೋಯಂವೋ ವಿದಧಾಂಚಿತ ಫಲಂ ತ್ರೈಲೋಕ್ಯನಾಥೋ ಹರಿ ಮದೀಯ ಹೃದಯಾಕಾಶೆ ಸದಾನಂದಮಯೋ ಗುರು ಉದೇತು ಸತತ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ತಿಮಿರಾರುಣ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಕೋರಸ್ ರಿಸೈಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಓಂಕಾರ ತ್ರೀ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಯೂಶ್ವಲ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಲಾಕ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫಿಂಗರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪುಟ್ ದಮ್ ಆನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲ್ಯಾಬ್ ಸಿಟ್ ಕಂಫರ್ಟಬಲಿ ರೆಕ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಐಸ್ ಓಪನ್ ದಿ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಮೌತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಾಯಿನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೋರಸ್ ರಿಸೈಟೇಷನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಪರ್ಮಿಯೇಟ್ ದ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಜನರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನ್ಲೀಷಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲುಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೈಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಭಾಗವದ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಕಾಂಪೆಂಡಿಯಂ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ದೇವ್ ವ್ಯಾಸದೇವ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನರೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಶುಗದೇವ ಹುಮ್ ಐ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಆಸ್ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಸೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಂಪರ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪಾಂಡವ ಲೀನೇಜ್ and the effect of the recitation was that parikshit maharaja also became a paramahamsa at the end before the fate takshaka came and administered his bite in which poison his body completely got burnt into ashes but before this happened parikshit was able to completely get away from his body and dissolve his mind intelligence and ego into the depths of the self the antaratma within when shrimad bhagavata is such a wonderful composition a compendium as we call it composed by the paramahamsas it is also to be recited not recited but explained and described by a paramahamsa one who has got the paramahamsa dimension the word hamsa always is related to is denoting the life part the jiva the living spirit in the body when that living spirit grows in its dimension normally it feels i am the body and therefore constricted as the body is this constriction is outgrown the jiva understands its own true nature it is unlike the body which is an aggregate of matter and energy but the spirit 
or the self that is animating and activating the body is not at all matter or energy it is something entirely different being so it does not have any characteristics or any of the fates and plights the body undergoes the body is first of all born the spirit is not born the body grows declines and finally dies these processes and outcomes and transitions also the spirit does not have if one is able to contemplate upon this fact and nature of the soul the living spirit that contemplation gradually grows in its own depth loftiness effect and sublimity until at last the person who contemplates upon the spirit really becomes the spirit this is what happened to parikshit now this story the entire story is very beautifully described by shrimad bhagavatam in fact we know bhagavatam to be a recitation made by made by shukamuni for parikshit shukamuni imbibed it learned it from his own father and guru vyasadeva afterwards it was sudha who was narrating it to the other people now in the shrimad bhagavatam there are altogether 12 skandhas or sections of all these sections the 11th is climax the climax of shrimad bhagavatam the crowning glory of shrimad bhagavatam that particular skandha is called mukti skandha it is actually a name and a description that are very very dominant and prominent in the north but in the south i am not able to hear anything like mukti skandha as a reference to the 11th one why is it called mukti skandha it is primarily because in the 11th skandha the discussion and description all are related to the soul and the realization of the soul first of all we are seeing in our friend a set of nine yogis who spoke about the supreme bhagavata dharma the devotee characteristics to nimi chakravarti emperor nimi nine of them happened to visit him so to say the emperor when he was performing a huge and holy sacrifice they came they went there unannounced unannounced nobody expected that such an arrival would be there nimi chakravarti was able to discern who arrived there unexpectedly he got up he stopped the sacrifice welcomed them gave them the seat washed their feet gave them something to drink and after they were comfortably seated he also sat in their front the preceptors and the others followed him they also sat behind him and the king was speaking to those people who arrived he expressed his fortune that they have arrived and finally asked them will you please enlighten me on what constitutes the characteristics of a lofty devotee of the lord such characteristics and dharmas which when pursued the lord himself will be supremely pleased and he will give them the devotees his own personality in reward they were very happy that they were address like this and one after the other all the nine yogis spoke about the subject each exposing one facet of it or the other according to his own liking and relish now this is what we encounter or face in the 11th skanda first following this is the great and consequential dialogue between shri krishna krishna paramatma and his chosen devotee uddhava the background is very clearly known i have also spoken about it krishna was already 125 years old normally the life span is 120 years in the case of krishna he lived five more years showing all of us that life is not something we find difficult at all should not find it difficult the body may have its own little weakness decline etc but that is no reason why we should become pained or unnecessarily afflicted by life provided you know the art and the skill of living
beautifully and well you can live to any extent of age as long as the body can so he transcended the 120 year period allotted to the humans he exceeded it by five more years and he was still all right maybe if left everything was left to himself he would have been living even now brahma came along with his followers and reminded him that he had to return to vaikuntha again he had come here to dispense with something very special that mission was over and he should go back because the chair was vacant nobody was there to sit on his chair krishna said i know it well i have completed my mission as desired by brahma the creator whatever is the excess load mother earth is suffering from due to the wicked and mischievous people of the world i have liquidated all of them directly or indirectly now i am free to come back the only thing left is destruction of my own lineage who have become very proud and left without any leadership as from me they may even destroy the whole society like the oceans overflowing its boundary or their boundaries brahma went back and sri krishna had already instrumented the way for destroying his own clan that was going on right at that time uddhava his trusted counselor as well as devotee went to him nobody else was there and told him i understand my dear lord that you are going back and once you have decided to go back nobody can stop you nor will you stop i have reconciled myself with your departure but i have one problem i am a person who cannot keep away from your lotus feet even for half a second i have been associated with you serving you very closely you have taken me to all places where others will not be taken you have been consulting me on important missions where i have deliberated along with you so the greatness that i have in having been associated with you so closely is something that i have cherished all along now suddenly this privilege and fortune is going to be cut i will be denied this i am not able to suffer it naham kshanardham api keshava tyaktum samutsahe natha swadham nayam nayamam api therefore i have only one request you will leave in any way take me also along with you wherever you go krishna was really confronted he had to go how can he take along with him anybody else this body is born of the earth it is surviving on the earth and when the body is dropped what goes where it goes can anybody take another what is that non bodily factor if you are speaking about the soul because it is different from the body it was never born and it is never dying also if dying is not there where is the question of taking and going so uddhava is not able to understand this truth in spite of his long association with krishna so he said in a very beautiful and sarcastic manner so to say my dear uddhava your problem i understand and appreciate it's very difficult to resolve it but i will resolve it in this way before i go uddhava you yourself leave so that you will not be here to witness my departure on the other hand i will be forced to tolerate your absence and your departure put the problem to my shoulder and i will bear it then uddhava says that is something very very difficult for me whatever you say as my master and the law and as the lord i must immediately be able to observe it abide by it follow it i should not have a second word about it but i am not able to my dear krishna you know it it is your own maya your own illusory power that makes all the people bound to their body and the relations of the body it's a misunderstanding we understand but it is not leaving us so i am suffering from ignorance and delusion whereby my own body and the body's relatives become a source of attachment a feeling of inseparability from them is very strong in our minds i am not able to overcome that so i am very sorry very sorry 
Krishna was advising him to leave Dwaraga and himself both. And the first part of his advice was this. Tvam tu sarvam parityajya sneham swajana bandhushu maya veshya manasamyak samadrak vicharasvagam yadidam manasavacha chakshurbhyam shravanadibhi nashwaram grihyamanam cha vidhi maya manovayam Squarely he tells, Krishna tells Uddhava, Tvam tu sarvam parityajya Sneham Swajana Bandhushu. In the case of Arjuna, who had come to fight in the Kurukshetra battlefield, on seeing his own relations on the one hand, and also the teacher as well as the grandfather, particularly on the opposite camp, he suddenly became deluded. A powerful attachment, so to say, a wrong identity overpowered him. And he was completely, completely crumbled. He crumbled completely. There also Arjuna had to be treated by Krishna. Particularly to get away from that wrong attachment to the body and body's relatives. That was for making Arjuna to fight the war. The same bodily delusions have overpowered Uddhava also and he is not able to leave. So he says, Tvamtu sarvam parityajya sneham swajana bandhushu. Towards your own relatives and your own blood and matrimonial relations, whatever love you have, whatever love and fondness you have for things as part of your life, for your utility or enjoyment, all this completely you abandon, renounce, eschew, abandon everything. Relinquish everything. Maya Veshya Manas Samyak Samadrug Vicharasvagam. Fix your mind only on me. Only on me. I am after all dear to you. You are not able to get away from my lotus feet, you said, for half a second. So if I am so dear to you and so beloved to you, it should be easy and possible for you to keep me in your heart. So keep me in your heart. May Yaveshya Manas Samyak Samadrut Vijaraswagam So far you were with your family, with your friends, relations and many other things. When you leave everything, you will not have any of these. Walk away from Dwaraka, walk away from your relatives. If you walk by one or two days, you will have walked about 25, 30 or 40 or 50 kilometers. And if you pass 100 or 200 kilometers, then all this memory will be gone. They will not be near at hand at all. Keep me in your heart and then look at everybody alike. See me everywhere. See me inside you. May you be Krishna incarnate. Incarnate. There should be no Uddhava at all. Only Krishna and Krishnatva in you. Yadidam manasavaja chakshurbhyam shravanadhibhihi Nashwaram grihyamanam cha vidhi maya manomayam. Is it possible for you to leave everything if you ask me? I disclose to you the absolute truth about human life. Whatever you are able to perceive here, see here and deal with in various ways. This is my cherished body. This is my mother. This is my father. This is Krishna. This is my brother. This is my sister. This is my married partner. This is my house. These are the articles for use in my life daily. All these feelings you understand. Manasa vacha chaksurbhyam shravanadhibhi. Whatever you see and interact with, with the mind, with the senses, eyes, ears, etc. Nashwaram. Everything is perishable, perishable, perishable. Grihyamanam cha. They have only value so far as the mind is there. It is the mind that makes them, mind that perceives them, mind that fondles them. The senses are not responsible for what they say. The senses are activated and animated by the mind. The mind animates them, then only the senses perceive. If a person is asleep fast, without disturbing his sleep, if you open the eyelid and show him a bundle of flowers, then take away the flowers, leave the eyelid for closing automatically. Next morning when you ask him, 
did you see the bouquet of flowers i showed before your eye he will say no why what is the reason the eyes have no power of see the eyes are empowered to see by the mind you have to be wakeful the mind has to be sensitive and the mind has to animate and activate the senses for their perception for their interaction so all these are perishable all these are perceived by the mind alone and whatever is perceived by the senses and also conceived by the mind in the form of impressions and imaginations understand all of them are maya manomayam say that maya manomayam it is all illusory 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 like the mirage in the desert like the water you see during the day in a hot sun on the tarred road on which you are driving at a distance you see water flowing so it is an illusion 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 pumso ayuktasya nanartha bhramasya guna dosha bhag only when the senses are not under control you are not able to integrate them and manage them well you are deluded by so many things around you and you lose your vision and stability what you have to resort to jnana vijnana samyukta listen to what i say take up the knowledge pursuit take up the knowledge pursuit and be endowed with the right spiritual and philosophical wisdom and overcome the hold that plurality manifoldness has in your mind when uddhava heard what krishna said the few words of instruction he said he understood that it was not easy for him to grasp what krishna said and implement it straight away whenever krishna says something uddhava knew that it was the supreme truth there was no question of doubting there was no question of not being able to implement it also but somehow he is not able to do it because of some delusion that is working in him very strongly and at very serious depths of his personality so he comes up with a statement soham mama khamiti mudhamadir vigadha tvan mayaya virajitatmani sanubandhe tatvanjasa nigaditam bhavata yathaham samsadhayami bhagavan anushadhi prutyam this one verse of shrimad bhagavata particularly of the 11th skanda moksha skanda mukti skanda is supremely indicative of the human mind every one of you should read it particularly understand it imbibe it learn it by heart and now and then now and then recite it soham mama hamidi mudhamadir vigadha my dear lord i have a two fold delusion in me soham soham i am that i am that but i don't have the right identity i am clinging to the wrong it is this body that i say i am this i am this i am that our body is male our body is female but do you think our soul inner personality is either male or female the same words are heard by both men and women equally there is no masculine listening and feminine listening words are the same air is the same food is the same earth is the same water is the same the sun and moon their rays are the same so where is the difference that identity we have soham mama ham mama ham many things are related to this this body is mine body's belongings are mine i am the body or my body then my house my relatives my friends my this my that now in this soham and mama ham my mind is quite steeped mudhamadihi it is not a right understanding it is a wrong understanding a delusion vigadha it is very strong and deep i am steeped in this tvan mayaya virajitatmani sanubandhe it is by virtue of your maya your 
illusory power power of illusion you have put us into this this wonderful plight virajidatmani sanubandhe this body is the artificial creation that you have made where i have the wrong identity sanubandhe and all the things associated with the body associated with the body namely bodies relatives the house the articles for use the car everything tatvanjasani gaditam bhavata yathaham yathaham samsadhayami bhagavan anushadhi prutyam because i am very steeply in it you alone will have to deliver me lift me up from that tatvanjasani gaditam bhavata yathaham whatever instruction you have given me what is that get away from all these attachments leave dwaraka leave me leave your relatives and then walk yes i will and i should but i am not able to the same manner in which arjuna also spoke i agree that i have to fight bhishma and drona my grandfather and my preceptor but how shall i fight how shall i fight my mind is not agreeing with my emotions are very turbulent not allowing me to fight my intelligence also is showing that it is improper to fight it is because of greed for the kingdom greed for the royal pleasures that we have come here to fight it is sinful you should not this is what my intelligence says so unless i am able to set right my mind and intelligence and both of them agree to help me i will not be able to proceed with the action here also he says the same manner tatvanjasani gaditam bhavata yathaham samsadhayami bhagavan anushadhi prutyam i shall be able to follow your instruction adhere to your words and get away from dwaraka and yourself my dear lord how shall i be able to do it you enable me empower me enlighten me in order to do what you have said otherwise out of my own strength or my own understanding and wisdom i shall not be able to do it satyasya te swadarsha atmana atmanonyam vaktaramisha vibudheshva vina anujakshe sarve vimohita dhiyas tapamayaye me ബ്രഹ്മാദയസ്തനുഭൃതോ ബഹിരർത്ഥഭാവാ സത്യസ്യതെ സ്വദൃശ ആത്മന ആത്മനോന്യം വക്താരമീശ വിബുധേഷ്വപി നാനുചക്ഷേ മൈ ഡിയർ ലോഡ് ഐ ഹവ് ബിൻ അസോഷിയേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് യു ഫോർ ഡീക്കേഡ്സ് ഐ നോ വാട്ട് യു ആർ ഹു യു ആർ വാട്ട് യു ആർ കേപ്പബിൾ ഓഫ് ഹൗ മച്ച് വൈസ് യു ആർ വാട്ട് എക്സ്റ്റെൻഡ് ഓഫ് വിസ്ഡം സ്പിരിച്വൽ വിസ്ഡം യു ഹാവ് whether you are an efficient instructor and adviser i know it well and from my understanding i have to say that there is nobody in this world nobody in this creation as efficient and wholesome a teacher instructor as you are and you can be vibudheshwa vina anuchakshe there may be a number of people enlightened in this world spiritually but none of them will be like you none of them will be like you you are quite different sarve vimohita diyah sarve vimohita diyah all of them are deluded in their intelligence tava mayaya by virtue of your own illusory power all of them are deluded deluded he goes to the extent of saying brahmadayastanubhudo all people who are body including brahma bahirartha bhava see this is where shrimad bhagavata excels excels all including brahma downward are deluded and they always are interested in outside things outside things nobody is interested in the treasure their mind can be the treasure the intelligence can be the greatness that wisdom has the magnificence enlightenment has 
the power and glory the human heart and mind when enlightened when enlightened will imbibe none of them knows it all of them have the external focus the sensory focus the object focus what is brahma all along doing creating creating what is he creating the bodies of people bodies of people bodies he doesn't create one soul even so he is interested in the objects and multiplying the objects how many people have died and how many have i to replace now their interest and focus are in the sensory objects now this is a question of a delusion gripping the mind the mind is not a sensory product it is not material it is not energetic it is something entirely superior to both so nobody seems to have a wisdom with them which can penetrate into the inner dominion into the inner horizon then extract from the mind and the intelligence the characteristic delusion and ignorance they are suffering from i am not able to find anybody so my dear lord you yourself will have to pose as an instructor for me like a teacher to a student and tell me the way by virtue of which i can access my delusion inside me which has enfolded the mind and the intelligence get rid of it then listen to what you say and walk off from dwaraga leaving you dwaraga and my relations at one stroke just see our scriptures are wonderful 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 you only hear about krishna in various other aspects other aspects many people will read bhagavatam and they will always be interested in krishna's exploits and excellences how many people are interested in listening to the childhood pranks of krishna then the heroic and adventurous acts of krishna how did he fight the war how did he defeat this defeat that how did he suckle the breast of putana all these people are interested in this but nobody tries to think of krishna as an enlightening master as a spiritual stalwart as an exceptional and lofty and magnificent knower as a great teacher of wisdom nobody is interested in knowing just see Uddhava is asking stand before me my dear lord as a teacher make me a school student and teach me teach me to overcome whatever obstacles i suffer from in my mind and intelligence and make them fit to take your instruction and walk off from dwaraka and your own presence the climax of shrimad bhagavatam if shrimad bhagavatam has to tell us anything it has to tell us only words of supreme wisdom which will ornament embellish enrich empower enlighten expand and bestow crowning glory in our mind to our mind intelligence and heart look for that from shrimad bhagavatam don't ask for petty things like money house and what not when you seek the glory of the lord when you seek the realization of the supreme truth all these things will naturally come to you don't worry yoga kshemam vahamyaham become a devotee of the lord become a seeker of the truth then all other things will start flowing to you irresistibly without your seeking without your knocking without your striving without you are disturbing the lord by repeated reminders leave everything to him krishna starts instructing uddhava the same krishna when he was of the middle age instructed a parallel instructed arjuna of parallel age similar age but that was for the sake of activating arjuna to fight activating arjuna to fight inspiring him enlightening him for fighting the same krishna when he was 125 years old he opens his mouth now to enable uddhava to leave him and dwaraka forever jessi the same krishna 
giving two different sets of instructions and the basis of the two instructions is equally the soul prayena manuja loge loka tattva vichakshana ha prayena manuja loge loka tattva vichakshana ha samuddharam dihi atmanam whenever there is a crisis in the human world the crisis is always first of all recognized or assessed by the mind and it has to be overcome overcome by the intelligence by using wisdom to understand the problem and to find the remedy mind first of all senses the problem the intelligence next presents the solution for you unless the mind and the intelligence are in very good league very good friendship we will not be able to live in this world my dear souls all your suffering is due to your mind is due to your intelligence not being activated properly to resolve the problems of the mind unless the intelligence and the mind are put together and they work in unison we will not be able to resolve our life and go forward with with stability success and glory atmano gururatmaiva purushatve cha maam atmano gururatmaiva <clears throat> for everything one's own self is the ultimate deciding factor you have a miserable plight this miserable plight will be accepted by you or you will overcome shri krishna shri krishna narrates to uddhava something called bhikshu geeta the story of a brahmana in the avanti desha and there he says bhikshu geeta he says quoted by krishna to uddhava in this world nobody outside is responsible for anything that we suffer from or enjoy for everything the cause is manah parat param karanam amananti mind is the supreme cause of everything this mind has to be identified properly and harnessed properly he says here also he says mind mind self effort self effort your own endeavor is the deciding factor your own self is the teacher your own self is the guide your own self is the source of all that you want in your life ekadvitra chatushpado bahupadas tatha padaha bahuya sandhi purah srishta tasam me paurushi priya this is something very important i don't think you will find it anywhere in other scriptures krishna says assuming the position of the supreme lord he says i started creating 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 first of all i created bodies bodies eka dvi tri chadushpado bahupada stathapada i started creating bodies with one leg two legs three legs four legs many legs and no leg what what i started creating the bacterium the mono cellular life then coming to the body one leg two leg three leg four legs all these things bahubadas tatha pada many legs and no leg bahvya sandhi puraha srishta all these bodies are in a way a town or city for the jiva suppose your body lives in a city or a town how will the city be in the same manner the body is for the jiva navadware pure dehi it has got nine gates the body city has got nine gates shri krishna says in bhagavad gita in his advice to arjuna so he says bahuya sandhi puraha srishtaha tasam me pavrushi priya i was not happy 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 by creating all these bodies ultimately i created the human body which has only two legs 
the human body completely rests on the feet and it is perpendicular to the earth and the head is totally above the rest of the body in the human body alone is such a distinction such a distinction our head is called urdhvanga that is the topmost anga part of our body everything in the human body whatever life we lead whatever activities we perform all of them will have to be under our head not under our hand not under our leg let head be the ruler in you the guide in you the master in you the maker in you do not be emotional listen to the voice of the intelligence listen to the voice of the head tasam me paurushi priya when the human body was created i was very very happy you know why he was happy our shastras always will have to explain when a statement is made why was krishna happy atratam margayandyadha yukta hetu bhirishwaram grihyamanair gunair lingaihi agrahyam anumanatah atramam margayandyadha yukta hetu bhirishwaram grihyamanair gunair lingaihi agrahyam anumanatah you know these are so musical so beautiful so messageful why don't you open it read and understand atra in this human body maam margayanti in the human body alone we are able to enquire into the supreme lord or the supreme reality elephant has got a stout body wow it can take us even on the tail such a human such a great body big body but poor elephant cannot think and understand it cannot distinguish between the body and the non bodily factor inside but in the human body people are able to enquire into myself maam margayanti adha in a splendidly good manner their enquiry is not a small or a trifling enquiry they take up the enquiry spend years and decades pursue it dedicatedly and ultimately they find the full answer clarity and fulfillment not that they fail in it margayanti adha yukta hetu bhirishwaram yukta hetu bhi in their enquiry the dominating factor or the guiding factor overriding factor must be reason and logic reason and logic brihaspati says whatever statements the shastras are making don't accept them read them reflect upon them if you find them reasonable and rational then alone you accept them not otherwise otherwise reject reject simply because a statement is there before you don't accept it think about it if you cannot think go to the people who are capable of thinking there will always be somebody or some people in the society who are given to thinking dispassionate thinking whether it is right or wrong what for is our wisdom our mind can be emotional but the intelligence can only be rational only be rational people ask me what is the difference between mind and intelligence so i tell them when i ask you what is 2 plus 3 you will say 5 when i ask you 10 multiplied by 2 you will say 20 it's very simple answer it comes from the mind now i am asking you a question what is that question 2 plus 3 5 why is it not 4.5 or 5.2 why should you say 2 plus 3 make 5 can it not be 4.5 generally i find baffled why is swami ji asking like this why should you be baffled you explain why what you are saying 2 and 3 added together why do they become 5 why not you get a result something like fractional 4.5 in arithmetic we are always taught what is taught plus 2 multiplied by plus 3 is plus 6 
plus 2 multiplied by minus 3 is minus 6. Hmm. When we ask the teacher, the teacher will say, when plus multiplied by minus, it becomes minus. Hmm. Ah. We have heard. I have not asked my teacher why is it so. The teacher also does, has not taken the trouble of saying, do you know why I am saying it is minus? It can as well be plus. That also we have sanctioned. Okay. When minus 2 is multiplied by minus 3, why should, what is the result? It is plus 6. Bah! This plus is neither in 2 nor in 3. Minus 2 multiplied by minus 3. Suddenly it becomes plus 6. So I am asking so many people including arithmetics and mathematics teachers, why 2 minuses multiplied become plus? One man in Malaysia tried to explain it to some extent reasonably. He was telling me, Swamiji, what this plus indicates and what this minus indicates. If you go into the understanding of plus and minus, not merely as a symbol, but what it denotes, then we may possibly get an answer. It is not that the mathematical science teaches you nonsense. It tells you it's not science. So we must be able to understand. Why am I saying this? I am saying this only to help you understand what is intelligence and what is mind. Minus 2 multiplied by minus 3 plus 6. Mind's job is done. It reminds and it tells you. Now the question arises, why is it so? Why did you make it plus? It is not in both the figures. Then you will have to think or you try to go into it, inquire. Like Newton observing an apple falling, many apples falling, all of them falling perpendicularly, parallelly to the earth. None of them flies, none of them goes in a tangent. So why should all apples fall? Why not they flee? His intelligence started questioning. One year he questioned and then found out the gravity of the earth. The falling is not done optionally by the apple. Every apple or any other object held within the gravitational orbit of the earth will have to come to the earth. So by intelligence he invented it. He discovered it. So in the same manner, Atramam margayandyadha yukta hedu bhirishwaram yukta hedu bhirishwaram You have to connect cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. I asked you, what did I say? When somebody is closing the eyes and sleeping, without disturbing the sleep, you open the eyelid and show a bouquet, a flower, flower and take it away, close his eyelids. Next morning when you ask him, have you seen the bouquet? He will say, no. Why? If the eyes are empowered to see and you have opened the eyelid and the object is shown, he must be able to say, I have seen. So it is not merely eyes that see. Seeing is a process, not resting solely with the eyes. The mind has to be present. Now this is the reason we adduce. Like that, on the basis of the visible data and the visible factors, you will have to infer the invisible, the invisible. Margayandyadha yukta hetu bhirishwaram ishwaram maam margayanti atra. The Lord has to be inquired into. Will have to be searched through inquiry. Where? Within your body, my dear souls, not a millimeter away. All of you are failing in the venture because you are looking for an external Lord. Lord is there in that temple. Let us go to that temple. You leave the Lord in the temple and you come away as yourself to your house. There are people who come to our ashram from Guruvayur. Sometimes I ask them, Did you go to Guruvayur? Yes. Did you see the Lord? Had a good vision? Yes. Now have you left him there or brought him with you? Everybody goes to the temple to leave the Lord there, never to bring him along with. Has any one of you told Guru Ayurpan, my Guru Ayurpan, my dear Lord, I have been coming so far to see you, this time I am going away, please come along with me and be in my heart. Have you ever said, how many times will you go? 
and only when you go you see the lord when you come away you don't see him so the distance from lord is much more than proximity to the lord which you are gaining by going so in the very body grihyamanair gunair lingaih agrahyam anumanatah there are a number of visible factors in our body provided by the senses if you collect all this data all this information and submit them to a process of reasoning inference finding logic rationality then you will be able to find the presence of the lord the other day i was explaining what janmadyasya yato anvayadi taratah i explained to the audience here anvaya and vidireka by applying the two canons of logic we are able to discover the supreme fourth factor agrahyam anumanatah by applying by applying the process of inference the process of rationality rational science we are able to understand him properly the conversation proceeds like that and then the first thing that sri krishna does is to remember and recite to uddhava a conversation that took place between krishna's own predecessor yadu yadu chakravarti and an avadhuta like shukamuni are you with me yes. ha yes. sri krishna remembers a dialogue which his predecessors had narrated to me maybe when he was a child or maybe when he was a little grown up <coughs> your own purvaja your own ancestor yadu was traveling <coughs> on a chariot on the way he met an avadhuta a hippie a spiritual hippie but on seeing him he found he was not an ordinary man a very young person resplendent very cheerful very brilliant shining lustrous very young he was walking carelessly carelessly with nothing in his hand simply walks as if unconcerned by the surroundings immediately yadu chakravarti felt that this is not an ordinary person he must be a person belonging to a very high spiritual dimension stop the chariot got down from the chariot and then went near him touched his feet prostrated before him and then put forward a question he says i remember this itihasa and i tell you by way of by way of instructing you and achieving for you whatever you ask me for atra pyudaharam deemam itihasam puratanam abadhudasya samvadam yado ho amitate jasah yadu himself was a brilliant person a great scholar our princess used to be taught all the scriptures the present day ministers are taught nothing the first thing that should be done is call all the ministers after election and give them at least a two weeks course in spirituality then everything will be all right in this country similarly ias people are recruited and there is a time lag of 3 to 4 months before they are really appointed given training before that i used to mention that we must have something like a two weeks or a one month program whereby our select avias recruits they are exposed to the great knowledge treasure that we have especially our prasthanatrayam the dashopanishad bhagavad gita and brahma sutras and some of the allied prakarana granthas these should be exposed to them this is a knowledge that we have our own people have written preserved adored pursued perfected and become great noble and noteworthy our own people have done not a syllable of it can be changed can be changed it is preserved every letter of it is preserved the ramayana which valmiki wrote is still the same 
the mahabharata that veda vyasa has written still the same they are not preserved in the reading rooms and libraries they are preserved in homes in the hearts and minds of the people in this country you go to kashmir you go to kanyakumari you go to saurashtra you go to assam wherever you go you will find ramayana mahabharata shrimad bhagavatam the vedic upanishads everything spread over here <coughs> what is the methodology they adopted in those ancient days to see that this great learning is spread throughout the country and the benefits are had by people equally equally remember our country was divided into several kingdoms at the time of independence we had 600 kingdoms in this country before the east india company was formed you can imagine how many more hundreds it should have been with so many kingdoms each kingdom being under a king and the king being supreme in language we are different in dress we are different in food we are different in our customs and ways we are different in spite of it when it comes to the culture of the nation we are the same and one just see how this was achieved even our independence struggle and fight assumed the gratitude assumed the gravity only when mahatma gandhi started reciting bhagavad gita bhagavad gita in his prayer meetings in place of hundreds thousands used to flock thousands used to flock because of the power of gita he used to recite the sthita pratnya portion the bhakta lakshana portion and the gunadida portion in the meetings i wish and i wonder that we must have some leaders at least in the present who can do similarly or who can even excel mahatma gandhi everyone takes his hat when he finds the other man has something good and great particularly spirituality spirituality is the one unifying force it is the one elevating elevating power it is the one supreme source by which we can have enlightenment transcending all differences all boundaries unifying all the people under one grand and soothing embrace this we should understand what a wonderful grain they have see krishna is quoting his own ancestor whatever happened long long back atrapyudaharandimam idihasam puradanam avadhutasya samvadam yado ho amitate jasah avadhutam dvijam kanjide charandamakuto bhayam kamim nirichya tarunam yado ho papracha dharma vid you will always read this but you will not have the imagination to go to that day you should transport yourself to the period when yadu was traveling in a chariot as a great king and an emperor the horses were galloping tap 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 suddenly he tells the chariot here stop they stop and he got down go straight to the avadhuda one man a vagabond man was going there the yadu chakravarti goes to him falls at his feet praises him and makes an enquiry where will you find this tradition you tell where is the king or the emperor and where is the rustic vagabond traveler what is the relationship between the two the wanderer had something greater than the crown of a king he had something loftier than the power that a king possessed his glory was inner his magnificence was spiritual his knowledge was transcendental that was the difference every one here is a seeker of this inner grandeur inner grandeur what should have been the cultural elegance and refinement 
of the emperors of our land they were powerful they were glorious they were praiseworthy but when it came to the question of spiritual learning and spiritual enlightenment they were ready to fall at the feet of even a seemingly poor wanderer a beggar this is the only land where the beggar's robe is respected by the most powerful kings and emperors avadhutam dvijam kanchid charam tamakuto bhayam that avadhuta the word avadhuta means he who has thrown ascender thrown away thrown away what whatever belongs to him thrown away what all considerations that he has all rules and regulations that we have heard all stipulations made by the shastras shastras are stipulating for what for people who are bound on the earth who have ambition who have aspiration who have greed who have possessiveness when you overcome greed desire possessiveness and aspiration what do the shastras have to do for you they become your slaves they are no more your masters i don't want to possess anything in this world i am a non possessor i don't want anything from this world at all at all i don't look for anything i don't want any gain i am not afraid of a loss i consider my embodiment itself to be a burden if i get an opportunity to opportunity to ask god or if god will ever come before me the first question to him will be my dear god before sending me to your world which you have created should you not have asked me swami ji would you like to go there if i send you will you be happy but you never asked me you have sent me to the world and you are asking me to live this is a world which i don't like i may like you but i don't like your creation my dear god see this should be the attitude of the abaduda he fears nothing he aspires for nothing so he becomes above board inaccessible to the gods to the gods of the heavens inaccessible even to the scriptures which give you do's and don'ts that is why he is called an abaduda dujam kanchid externally he was a brahmin a duja charan tamakuto bhayam he was freely moving waving his hands fearlessly fearlessly no restriction no constriction no fear no doubt nothing he was moving very freely kavim nirikshya darunam certainly he was a man of great thought great value great inner dimension nirikshya darunam very young resplendent brilliant beautiful to whom everyone in this world will be attracted including monkeys and bees such a person yaduhu papracha dharma vidu so he wanted to ask him i want to has raise my inquiry it is about dharma the supreme goal of life yaduruvaja kuto buddhiriyam brahman agartuhu suvisharada yamasaadya bhavam lokam vidwa vidwan vidwam sharadi balavad kuto buddhiraya buddhiriyam brahman agartuhu suvisharada yamasaadya bhavan lokam vidwam sharadi balavad kuto buddhiriyam brahman o brahman great ascetic agartuhu suvisharada you certainly have a great wisdom a great intelligence by virtue of which you have captured the throne of non doership are you with me huh? everybody has a feeling i am a doer i have done i am a doer but this person has captured the throne of non doership i do nothing in this world i am not capable of doing anything 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 my eyes are seeing i don't see my ears are hearing ears do my tongue is tasting mouth is eating mouth is speaking i don't do anything my mind is thinking i don't do it my intelligence is reasoning i don't do it 
I am not the doer. Therefore, I am not the enjoyer. I am not the sufferer. I am not a karta. I am not a bhokta. I possess nothing. Nothing. The whole body is possessed by nature. I am breathing air moment after moment. The air is not my creation. Only when the air is there I can breathe. And inside the lungs are there. They are not my creation. So it is a conspiracy so to say between the lungs within my body and the external air. And what do I have to do there? Everything is not mine. Mine. I am myself belonging to somebody. I don't have an ownership. I am myself owned by somebody I don't know who. Kuto buddhiriyam brahman agartuhu suvisharada This kind of an on-doership cannot be achieved, cannot be gained, cannot be mastered by ordinary people. It requires a masterly intelligence. It requires a very lofty and exalted level of understanding. Suvisharada yama sadhya bhavan logam vidvam shcharadi By gaining and acquiring by mastering this knowledge vidvam sharadi balavad you have become a greatly and rarely enlightened person enlightened person but you are behaving like a child like a child like a child nobody will understand you i somehow have some tradition i have been brought up in the refinement of our culture So I am able to understand this world can have sometimes some such people I have heard about it. Fortunately I am seeing you here with no doubt with no resistance of any kind Yadu started addressing the traveler in this manner. Prayo dharmartha kameshu vivitsayam chamanavaha hetu naiva samihante ayusho yashasashriyaha prayo dharmartha kameshu vivitsayam cha manavah hedunaiva samihande ayusho yashasashriyah my dear respected sir what i have understood in my life is prayo normally dharmartha kameshu vivitsayam cha manavah all people men and women normally speaking in the world are interested only in dharma artha kama we have got four purusha arthas dharma the righteous way of living artha earning wealth by virtue of dharmic ways then utilizing them for fulfilling your desires kama then all the three not for all the life until you retire you acquire 60 years of life or so and the last is moksha so far it is one of possession thereafter it should be one of dispossession dispossession have nothing have nothing have nothing leave nothing leave nothing that moksha is left out only the three are indulged in hetunai va samihande ayusho yashasashriya what is the purpose the purpose is ayushaha yashasaha shriyaha heduna eva they want to ensure longevity and health then fame and respect <coughs> and prosperity and affluence these are the things that they want for that purpose prayo dharmartha kameshu vivitsayam cha manavaha heduna eva samihande they struggle and strive how many people are looking for an h1 visa how fortunately he has got it somebody comes and reports <laughs> we are not satisfied with our country's wealth if you are employed here you will be paid something like 60000 70000 1 lakh per year we are not satisfied i must be paid in dollars american dollars indian rupee is not okay ayushaha yashasaha shriya this is the only thought in the minds of the people 
ಪ್ರಾ ಧರ್ಮಾರ್ಥ ಕಾಮೇಶು ವಿವಿತ್ಸಾಂ ಚ ಮಾನವ ಟು ಎನ್ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ದಿಸ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ಅವರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಎಂ ಬಿ ಎಂ ಟೆಕ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಎ ಪಾಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಹೆವೆನ್ ಆರ್ ವೈಗುಂಠ ಆರ್ ಕೈಲಾಸ ನಾಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಾಂಜಿವಿಟಿ ಫೇಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪೆರಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಎಫ್ಲುಯೆನ್ಸ್ ತ್ವಂ ತು ಕಲ್ಪ ಕವಿರ್ ದಕ್ಷ ಸುಭಗೋ ಅಮೃತ ಭಾಷಣ ನ ಕರ್ತಾನೇ ಹಸೇ ಕಿಂಚಿದ್ ಜಡೋನ್ಮತ್ತ ಪಿಶಾಜವದ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವೆದರ್ ಯು ಲೈಕ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಸೇ ಟು ಮೀಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ 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 ವಾಟ್ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ತ್ವಂ ತು ಕಲ್ಪ ಕವಿರ್ ದಕ್ಷ ಸುಭಗೋ ಅಮೃತ ಭಾಷಣ ನ ಕರ್ತ ನೇಹಸೇ ಕಿಂಚಿದ್ ಜಡೋನ್ಮತ್ತ ಪಿಶಾಜವದ್ Please listen to this. Understand. Understand. When I look at you, my dear Avadhuda, what I feel is Tvam Tu, you are indeed Kalpaha, Kavihi, Dakshaha. You are very healthy. Your body is well formed, very beautiful, attractive and alluring also. You are very knowledgeable. That is what I get the impression. Dakshaha, you can do virtually anything and everything you are a masterly you are masterly in doing everything performance in skill is characteristic in you subhagaha in every way you are appealing to the others amrita bhashana sweet spoken you are you will not pounce at others jump at others how beautifully and sweetly you talk na karta ne hase ginchid at the same time you have no feeling that i shall do i will do i have done that kartrutva that doership you don't have nehase kinchid you have no haste hurry or ambition to be doing something and achieving it so that you will have performancial excellence and achievemental glory no nothing your mind is contented you seem to be carrying an inner beatitude you are full you are full internally that inner affluence and abundance are very clearly visible from your face jadon matta pishajavadu externally viewed you are jada you are inert you know nothing unmatta drunk inebriated with inner pishajavadu like a gaul like a pishaja these are some of the ways of the avadhuda in shrimad bhagavatam rishabhadeva is described as one such he gave a beautiful sermon calling all the people his own children and the citizens and gave a beautiful talk on dharma and after completing the talk he simply walked off from the palace as an avadhuda he started wandering and wandering and wandering and ultimately came to the kurg forest in karnataka by the time he had become a total avadhuda ba <sighs> he had pushed so many stones into his mouth so that he could not close it and open it further exactly like a pishaja don't be frightened understand that these are the dimensions where people can step into he wanted to be one exemplify in himself the loftiest avadhuta that is possible when he had reached that zenith of avadhuta hood suddenly nature conspired herself brought a huge wild fire and encircled him so that nobody will have the trouble of seeing him and cremating him bhagavad bhagavata would not have been full but for the story of rishabadeva also so he says jadon matta pishav javad janeshu dahyamaneshu kamalobhad vagnina na tapyase agnina mukto gangam bhastai vadvipaha i don't know my dear souls 
what are these descriptions what are these examples upamas alankaras etc presented by it it is a maha kavya janeshu dehyamaneshu kama lobha davagnina the people of the land the people of the plains are getting scars then burnt what did arjuna say after 13 years of austere life he came to kurukshetra the battlefield and 4.5 million warriors are surrounding him that was the time for him to display his valor to display his prowess to manifest his great and superior skill at that time he started crying and sobbing saying that nahi prapashyami mama apanudya yachogam uchoshanam indriyanam my dear krishna my dear krishna please feel for me my whole body and senses are being scorched by grief affecting my mind unless you are able to cool and comfort me i will not be able to take my bow and arrow the great powerful and glorious arjuna lamenting that his body was being scorched by grief having come to the battlefield where he should fight he should fight with exceptional valor and become glorious janeshu dehyamaneshu kamalobha davagnina by the huge powerful wild fire of kama passion desire and greed lobha davagnina i am seeing an angster in my friend this abaduda natapyase agnina muktaha that wild fire has not affected this wonderfully great and blessed person he moves about freely freely caring for nothing concerned with nothing as if he wants nothing from this world he has nothing to give nothing to take he does in mind he is full of care freeness care freeness natapyase agnina mukto gangam bhastai vadyupaha like a huge tusker huge tusker it has gone into ganges the flowing ganges the tusker is very tall and it remains there unaffected by the roaring ganges the cool waters that flow comfortably it stands there like that you are remaining like a tusker a spiritual tusker in the turbulent waters of the world what a wonderful sight how blessed am i how fortunate am i to have seen you at least please give me instruction now krishna is reciting reciting their conversation it is a conversation that took place with an ancestor of krishna's krishna's own ancestor just see what is shrimad bhagavatam this is why it is called mukti skandha the 11th skandha i shall stop here now for the time being tomorrow swami nirvisheshananda swami ji my own disciple from our ashram he was supposed to come and deliver a speech but he has some problem with the body to look after itself he won't be able to come the doctors have said don't go be at rest he said they said rest means you should not get out and be exposed to the vagaries of weather so maybe i will have to talk tomorrow also i will continue the theme or there is another suggestion swami ji obviously you have not completed the story of yashoda's kanluni krishna so the people are interested that you continue the theme and complete it and say whatever else you want to say so i don't know what should be done in any way let me stop for the time being and we shall see what follows tomorrow prabuddham vimuktam vikaharadihinam prasannam sada nitya bodhasvarupam param nischalam nirgunam sarvarupam bhajeham sada anusmarahami pranahumi prabuddham vimuktam vikaharadihinam 
प्रसन्न सदा निबोधस्वूप परम निश्चल निर्गुण सर्वूप भजेहम सदास्मरा प्रणवी हरि 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 Let us have the concluding recitation of Om Kara in chorus. Take your pose for it. Everyone should participate. All of you, Pangadukam, you Om Kara, Jabatil. been given a set of books what are these let me see one is a garland of three jewels this is a set of talks given this is on shrimad bhagavatam it is an english book that is why i speak in english garland of three jewels three particular instances and narrations episodes have been taken and discussed in this book a very small one this will give you a peep and insight into what is the glory and the grandeur that shrimad bhagavata is laying open before you this is a book in the company of my lord written by ma gurupriya when she was writing and she was showing me the portions written i felt that the book should be given the title in the company of my lord ma's devotion was somewhat very rare with her devotional approach she started and she grew tremendously spiritual through the same path the one important point that struck me was she was worshiping a piece of stone a saligrama so to say when her search in the in the horizon of spirituality started she comfortably took that idol away and put it in a box no more worship was done at all when i read it i wanted to say it is in the company of my lord she is writing very well openly about her own life her own life until she took up sanyasa after coming to my ashram so you will find all the narrations are relating to a period till she became a sanyasi so it is fully applicable to and parallel to the lives of different types of householders anybody who reads the book will have a kind of an enhanced devotional appeal and their own devotional practices thoughts proximity with the lord will be substantially benefited by reading this book in the company of my lord this is origin and origin and relevance of vishnu sahasrama what exactly is this vishnu sahasrama how did it transpire and what does it have to offer to us historically is vishnu sahasrama having any place in the life and growth of our people is it something really historically related to the land all these points are discussed here 5000 years back it was in kurukshetra about 160 kilometers away from our capital new delhi that this vishnu sahasrama was told by bhishma pitamaha lying on the bed of arus to his own grandson yudhishthira who had won the war but was was refusing to sit on the throne this is that wonderful book this transpired after the war and bhagavad gita transpired before the war the time duration between the two is 18 days Bhagavad Gita was told after 18 days Vishnu Sahasrama was communicated both of them are wonderful and unique in their relevance and application to all of us i would like you to take interest in these books read them understand them and then communicate to the others in the manner in which you have benefited this is what the books are meant for it should be a means of communication and every one of you should become a torch bearer of spiritual wisdom and its dissemination that is the idea okay i shall stop now hari om
ಅಂತ ಜಯ ಗುರು